In this video, we learn what an angle of elevation is, as well as what an angle of depression is. And for that, I'll start by defining both of those things on the left-hand side of the screen, and I'll then work through a typical exam-style question involving an angle of elevation. So, let's get started. In this illustration here, we can see that we have two people, Alan and Bill, and Alan is standing at ground level, whilst Bill is standing at the top of this wall. And so that's the context we'll work with here. Now to define the angle of elevation as well as the angle of depression, the first thing we need to define is the line of sight. Here's what I mean. Suppose Alan and Bill are speaking to each other, and whilst doing so, because they're polite, they look right at each other. Then the line of sight is the straight line joining Alan's eyes to Bill's eyes, so something like this. In Alan's case, to look at Bill, he has to look upwards along the line of sight. And in Bill's case, to look at Alan, he has to look downwards along the line of sight. And now what I'll do is I'll draw a horizontal line leaving Alan's eyes. So something like this. And I'll do the same from Bill's eyes. So something like this. Okay, now we speak of an angle of elevation as soon as we have to look upwards to see something. And so in this example, we can see that Alan has to look upwards along the line of sight to see Bill. And so we define the angle of elevation as the angle between the line of sight and the horizontal. So that's that angle there. And I'll just write this angle of elevation. On the other hand, we speak of an angle of depression as soon as we have to look downwards to see something. And that would correspond to what Bill has to do. Indeed, to see Alan, Bill has to look downwards along the line of sight, and so we define the angle of depression as the angle between the horizontal and the line of sight. And so I'll just write angle of depression. Okay, so that's what these two angles are. But before working through this example, let me quickly give you a nice little rule. As soon as we're given the angle of elevation from one point to the other, so here from Alan to Bill, or that we're given the angle of depression from one point to another, so from Bill to Alan, those two angles will always be equal. Indeed, this angle of elevation and this angle of depression are alternate interior angles. And consequently, we can write that the angle of elevation is equal to the angle of depression. Do make a note of this result. It's often given as a one-point question in exams. Okay, now that we've gotten the definitions out of the way, let's go ahead and work through this example. We're told that Alan stands opposite a brick wall. So we have Alan standing here, and this, well, that's the brick wall. We're then told that the angle of elevation from Alan to the top of the wall is 43 degrees, and he's standing 21 meters away from the base of the wall. Finally, we're told, taking the height of Alan's eyes as 1 meter 70 centimeters, find the height of the wall. When given a question like this one, what I like to do is add all the information I'm given to the diagram I have here. First of all, we're told that the angle of elevation from Alan to the top of the wall is 43 degrees. And so to illustrate that, I'll draw a horizontal line leaving Alan's eyes, so I'll say that's roughly there. There we go, that's my horizontal line, and I'll draw it all the way to the wall. And then I draw Alan's line of sight as he looks to the top of the wall, like so. Now the angle of elevation, remember, is the angle between the horizontal and the line of sight which is pointing upwards. In other words, it's this angle right here, that's 43 degrees. Next, we're told that he's standing 21 meters away from the base of the wall. Now what that tells us is that the distance from Alan's feet up to the base of the wall, so this distance right here, is 21 meters. And last but not least, we're told to take the height of Alan's eyes as 1 meter 70. In other words, the distance between the ground and this horizontal line here is 1 meter 70, which I could also write as 1.7 meters. And just for sticking to the colors here, that was this bit of information right here. And finally, we need to find the height of the wall. In other words, we need to find this length right here. And I'll go ahead and call that length H. Okay, well the first thing I'll point out here is that when we're given a question like this one, we can safely assume that the wall is at a right angle to the ground. 
In other words, I can safely add a right angle right here. Furthermore, this dotted horizontal line has to be parallel to the ground, so I can also add a right angle right here. And the trick for answering this type of question is to realize that we won't be able to find the height right away. But we will be able to find it in two steps. And the first step will be to consider the right angle triangle I'm hovering over right now. Using it, we'll be able to find this height right here. And in fact, let me draw that right angle triangle. I'm speaking of this one right here. There we go. Okay, so the first step will consist of finding the height of this blue triangle here. And in fact, I'll give that height a name. I'll call it h prime or h dash. Once we found h prime, all we'll have to do to find h is add the 1 meter 70 that separates the ground to the base of this blue triangle. So let's go ahead. I'll start by copying that blue triangle. So it would look something like this. There we go. Go to right angle triangle. The interior angle here is 43 degrees. The length of the base here, well, that's going to be 21 meters. And so I can write that here. That's 21 meters. And we need to find this side length here, which I called h prime a minute ago. Now, looking at this, this is a right angle trigonometry problem. And relative to this interior angle of 43 degrees, we're looking for the opposite side length. And so, in fact, I'll say that's equal to capital O for opposite. And, again, relative to this 43 degree angle, we have this 21 meter side length, which is the adjacent side length. And so I'll write equals to capital A here. And now to figure out which trigonometric ratio to use to find this side length, we can quickly remind ourselves of so ka toa And all I have to do now is look for which of the three so ka or toa contains the letters O and A, and it doesn't take us long to see that that's Toa. And this tells us that the tangent of the angle, so in this case the tangent of 43, is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. And so I can write that underneath here, tan of 43 is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. But since the opposite here is h prime and the adjacent is 21, we can say that tan of 43 is equal to h prime over 21. Now, to find h prime, all I have to do is get rid of this 21 that's dividing it. And for that, I multiply both sides of this equation by 21. So it turns into 21 times tan of 43 equals to h prime. In other words, h prime equals to 21 times tan of 43. And at this stage, all we need to do is plug 21 times tan of 43 into our calculators, and in doing so, and rounding to one decimal place, I find that that's equal to 19.6 meters. Done. And in fact, I'll write h prime equals to 19.6 meters right here. And I'll even box that first result. Finally, using the fact that h, the total height of the wall, is equal to h prime, that's the height we just found, plus 1 meter 70, we can go ahead and state that h is equal to 19.6 plus 1.7. And by all means check, but that leads us to h, the height of the wall, is equal to 21.3 meters. And that's the height of the wall. Now, although this wasn't initially asked, what if I were to add the question, what is the angle of depression x from the top of the wall to Allen? In other words, what's the angle of depression from this point right here at the top of the wall back to Allen? Well, to answer that question, we can use the result that I boxed over here. And for the sake of picturing it properly, I'll just draw a horizontal line from the top of the wall, something looking like this in which case the angle we're trying to find is this angle right here. So that's the angle x. Using the result I boxed here, we can state without even thinking that this angle of depression x must be equal to this angle of elevation. So that's 43 degrees. And so I can add that at the bottom here, I can say that x is equal to 43 degrees. And that's the final answer. And there we go. We now know what an angle of elevation is, we know what an angle of depression is, and we've worked through a typical exam-style question. And that's it for this tutorial.